Hello, and welcome to School Health Presents, Understanding the American Rescue Plan, ESSER, and Current Funding. I'm Dr. Ray Height. In this video, we're going to be inviting in the purchasing agents, administrators, and other faculty members of non-public schools, those of you in higher education, those of you who are working with our public libraries and our public museums. We wanna talk about how the funds can actually be used for you, and all of these areas are covered under those ESSER funds as we go through. So let's start with our non-public schools. There are some of those funds that aren't easily available for you. However, in section 2002, this was directed at you. So you do have the ability to pull in some of the funds that are out there. And you'll see that there is a couple of billion dollars altogether. Obviously it goes through the states and then you have to get it through your states or your local education agencies. So it is a separate allocated amount. Now, a lot of you are saying, how come we might have less than a school down the road? Oftentimes it has to deal with your Title I areas or Title I enrollments as you're going in. So what you want to understand is, yes, you do have access to funding. Talk to your local education agency. You know, is it that local public school district or is it some group within the state that you need to contact? But what you want to understand is there is some funding available for you. Now you've also got to understand this, and I've got B there. Funds provided shall not be used to provide reimbursements to any non-public school. So there's no reimbursement. So you've got to work through that LEA to make sure that you've got everything aligned and those funds are paid directly from them so that you can use these funds. Please, whatever you do, make sure you're making proper use of them. Uh, having worked with our non-public schools before, I know that it's very important. Sometimes the funds aren't readily available for us and we want to make sure we're able to access any of the funds that are there. Now, for those of you in higher education, again, there is a separate amount of funding that has come out to you. What you want to be aware of is the funding's been, again, pushed out via the states, but the percentages vary readily from state to state as they're going through. So although that, sound, that looks great at, at $40 billion, it may not be as much as you might expect, depending on what state you're in. You're also, ability to use these funds are going to be based on your overall endowment, too. So there is going to be an expectation that the larger the endowment, the less potential use of some of those funds you'll have access to. But basically, higher ed, you'll be able to use these funds in the exact same way that we see our K-12 public school districts actually using them. So again, you want to think, health and safety, you want to think assessments. On your side of things too, you want to think inclusivity. So think about programs that, again, are bringing in assistive technologies that may be helping those students, whether it be specialized devices, again, like, like a reader pen, or for those visually impaired, an OrCam read, or you might be bringing in other tools like a, a glass house or some type of a switch for easier access, but those are all available under section 2003 to be purchased and used. So what you also want to know is that not only do we have our non-public schools and our higher education institutions, but in the ESSER area from sections 2021 through 2023, you are able to get funding if you are a public museum, if you are a public library, and what you want to be recognizing is that really this is focusing in on making sure you're keeping everything in a healthy environment. So this could be PPE, it could be again, any type of disinfecting or sanitizing agent, but you can also be using it for partitioning so that you can have separate carrels for your computers. You can also be using it for assistive technologies so that you have granted access to everyone around. So these funds can be used not just for our public schools, but also schools outside of that K-12 public domain. 
So if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local school health rep. They'll be more than happy to work with you. If you have questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me. As always, I look forward to working with you somewhere down the road.